Hello and welcome to another episode of Britain in Poland. Today I am at a site called Treblinka, uh, which is just north of Warsaw, and it is one of the well, one of the many concentration camps you'll find in Poland. This one was actually uh, hidden by the Nazis um, towards the end of the war. It operated in uh, 1942 to 1943. And in its short time, some 20,000 people were interred here in the labor camp, which is Treblinka 2, uh, sorry, Treblinka 1. There are two sites here. And there were some 700,000 to 900,000 Jews exterminated in the gas chambers in Treblinka 2, which is the site I'm at now. Uh, as I said, this whole site was basically dismantled and hidden, even like the bodies were exhumed and burned by the German forces to try and hide the evidence of what happened here. So it's a bit of a, an archaeological site, you could say, um, but it's also a site where of a memorial. So most of what you see here are monuments to what happened. There's a museum, there are a lot of like plaques telling you the history. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what happened here at Treblinka and you can learn one of the worst sites for mass murder in Poland during World War II. Please stay tuned. Dzień dobry. Welcome to a Brit in Poland. This channel has a number of missions. The main one to create a video for every place on this list. Though I could use your help. The help could be in a number of forms. You could like my video, you could subscribe to my channel, you could follow me on Facebook or Instagram, or you could donate to my Patronite account. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the video. So I'll start by thanking my patrons, Ricky and Wojciech, and if you would like to help me along my journey to show you Poland, you're welcome to contribute. So Treblinka is just kind of northeast of Warsaw. I think it was about 45 minutes by train, and we got the train to a, a town called Malkinia, and from there, we had a bit of a hike uh, to get uh, to the site. It was actually a fairly long hike, 10 to 15 kilometers, I think, in the end. So it was quite a tiring day. But we're here to tell you the story. So basically, back uh, during the war, um, you would have these trains uh, that would consist of 50 to 60 carriages, each one containing about 120 people squeezed in. And these would be taken to here, which is the uh, supposed site of the Treblinka train station. And there's a story printed on these boards here about people who would run from the train, sometimes naked or half naked, uh, to a so a water source, absolutely gasping, uh, you know, for something to drink, and they would be shot uh, by the the German forces. Up to a third of the passengers in the carriages would actually die before even making it to the camp because of the the really terrible conditions they would have carried in. And uh, once they actually got to the camp, they would be chased with whips, and desperately trying to keep together with their loved ones as they are herded into the main camp. And once they actually got to the camp, they, uh, they had to deposit all of their possessions in an area called the uh, Sortierplatz Square, which is a common story. So anything they had on them had to go. And then after this, they would be made to undress uh, the men in like an open area and the women and children in a shed called the Ausgliders Barrack. After this, their hair would be shorn and sold for industrial processing. 
those who were too weak um, to go to the, the gas chambers, i.e. the old or the handicapped, would be taken to a separate pit where they were basically shot and thrown in. And those that were remaining would be led through to the gas chambers uh, through a kind of tube called a sklouch. Now, here is the museum and you can see a, a bit of a layout of uh, what the camp looked like. As I said in the introduction, there were actually two camps. And the first one uh, that we're going to visit today is Treblinka 2. And the reason we're visiting this one is it's the first one we get to um, along the journey. It's about two and a half uh, to five kilometers, something like that, to, uh, to get through the site. So as you can see, it's like in this kind of dense woodland. It was designed to be hidden. And this second camp, the uh, Treblinka 2, or the extermination camp, was set up in July 1942 as part of Nazi Operation Reinhard. And it was about four kilometers away from the, the village of Treblinka. It was actually built by prisoners who were stationed in Treblinka 1. I'll tell you the story of that shortly. And in the camp, some seven to 900,000 people were killed, mostly Jews, and that made this the, uh, the second deadliest place in Poland during the war. The camp would close in 1943, and it encompassed some 17 hectares of space, lined with a two and a half meter high fence, topped with barbed wire, and which were hidden with branches and leaves. Originally, uh, the, there were three gas chambers, each one about four by four meters, which were camouflaged as shower rooms, and this would later be increased to 10. So effectively, 5,000 victims could be killed at the time and as you see now, there's nothing left, just this memorial that's been placed. This particular monument is meant to be where the, the gas chambers were originally located. And the people were killed using diesel exhaust fumes, and it would take something like 20 to 25 minutes for the people to die. And when they were dead, the prisoners from the first labor camp were used to remove the bodies from the chambers and deposit these in a mass grave. There was an uprising in 1943 where some prisoners obtained several weapons from the armory and burned down several buildings. However, reinforcements arrived at the camp and quelled the uprising, killing about 675 prisoners in the process. The last transport of victims arrived on the uh, 19th of August in 1943, after which the camp was ploughed and sown, and in a further attempt to hide the evidence, the bodies in the graves were dug up and burned. So the Nazis really didn't want anyone knowing about the atrocities that were happening in this camp. And after the camp was uh, raised to the ground, it was turned into a farm and handed over to a Ukrainian family. So, yeah, what you see here are reconstruction kind of monumental elements, symb uh, rather symbolic of uh, the different towns and cities where people were deported to this camp from. And as I say, with some 900,000 people killed, it was truly horrifying how much death occurred here. Once you leave uh, the site of Treblinka 2, you have about a two kilometer walk uh, to get to the original site, Treblinka 1. And along the way, you have like a commandant's shelter, which has a small bunker. And you can also, in a moment, see the gravel pit. And the gravel pit was actually the reason why the original labor camp was set up in this particular site. 
because the Germans were using the gravel to make concrete uh, for the war effort, particularly against Russia. So this was the main site of labour, you could say. The camp itself um, was actually uh, functioning from the summer of 1941, right up until the end of uh, July 1944, and was basically built uh, by the prisoners in the beginning. And in this camp, you had about 20 German guards, uh, well, sorry, German staff, and 100 guards who were mainly Ukrainian, but you also had some Lithuanian and Latvian members there, as well as perhaps some other nations. Within the labor camp itself, you would see 20,000 people go through there over its years of operation, with there being about one to 2,000 people there at the time. And it said that at least 10,000 people died. We say at least because with all the excavations that have gone on, it's hard to know exactly how many people died. And there still could be bodies that are undiscovered on the grounds. The labor camp was 17 hectares. So similar size to the extermination camp and a fair amount of space. And within the camp, you had various, let's say, activities that the prisoners would have to do. So in addition to having to mine the gravel pit, take the gravel to trains and such, um, they were also working on the, the Buk River and kind of building ramparts and sort of fortifying the area. Women would be used to mend... Uh, clothing, to sew buttons, uh, to put on new glass for gas masks. Uh, the men would also be kind of assigned to be carpenters and tailors, where they were putting together garments. Uh, there was a farm uh, for vegetables and animal care, which was also maintained by the prisoners. And on a day-to-day -day basis, the prisoners would get watery soup, coffee grounds and a loaf of bread per 10 people with hardly any meat and often that was dead horses. And the prisoners were infested with lice which led to the spread of the disease and there was an outbreak of typhus in 1942. And those that couldn't work were separated and killed outside the camp. The area you see now is basically like an execution square and as well as people being shot, of course, there was another practice where prisoners would be killed by having their heads placed on a tree trunk and then smashed with a stone or wooden hammer. And what you see now is basically another kind of memorial graveyard, which is set up at the, the very end of the journey with the appropriate monuments to honour the many, many people who died here. So, as you can see, or as you've heard, Treblinka was an absolutely horrific place. Everyone there suffered. There would be many stories that came out of the cruelty. The fact that the Nazis thought that they could hide uh, the activities here is kind of truly incredible. And it really is a, a sight of true horror. And of course it, it was, you know, Poles, Romani, and, well, primarily Jews who were killed on this site. Here are some pictures of uh, the excavation because this is basically one giant archaeological site because this was the only way to really uncover some of the full truths of the extent of what happened here. And even though the Nazis burned the bodies, there were still many elements of them left. There were areas where, you know, teeth were found, probably sites where, like, the gold was extracted from fillings. And we hear many stories of the people who were killed here. 
So I would say Treblinka, though perhaps not the easiest place to, to get to in Poland, is one of those sites that, like Auschwitz, like Birkenhell, like Meidenek, tells a really powerful story and one I think you should see. Thank you very much for watching.